What's up, everybody? This is Whiskey in the Six. I'm Rob. Got a few guys in the chat already, which is nice. Nice welcoming crew. What's up, everybody? We got BB Jat. We got Joe Mez. We got Aquavite, but I'm sure he's probably going to go to bed soon because it's late where he is. He just had an epic live. There was like 300 people in the live it's it was insane apparently uh, i didn't get a chance to watch it live myself but i wish i did um we got mark from whiskey whistle who also has an incredible channel we got go habs kenneth is in the house mark saliba is in the house mark i'm still waiting for your shirt to come my brother just picked it up today i'm gonna grab it from him hopefully tonight or tomorrow and then i'll send that your way um jay ongman what's going on <laughs> my man's open-minded trying out different things honestly i i love this whiskey we're going to talk about it in, in just a sec uh robert in the uh, robert horvitz what's going on buddy rob gold also in the house a few robs in the house tonight uh andrew what's up buddy blue wing c he wants me to be epic. I'm going to try my best, Blue Wing C. But you, you're on your best behavior tonight, right? Um, 21 in the chat already. Very nice. Glad to have you guys. So quick pre-story to this whiskey, and then I'll give you the most recent story, which I find even more impressive. Found out this was coming out at the LCBO. Didn't know much about it. Um, it was only a hundred dollars, so ninety-eight, ninety-nine, or something like that. Uh, so for the LCBO, very, very good price. It's the Deanston 2008 nine-year-old Bordeaux red wine cask matured. It's fifty-eight point seven percent, so it's cask strength. And knowing what I know about what happened with the Deanston PX cask strength that was ten years old. I snatched two because I knew that it was going to be probably very good. When I opened the bottle, I got home, I opened the bottle pretty much right away and it was good, but I was a little concerned. I was, it was a little tight. It was a little reserved, I guess you can say, um, on the nose. And then on the palate, it was super hot. So it was a combination that obviously not many people love. Um, it was still good stuff, just not incredible stuff. I probably shared it up to this level and then let it sit for a couple months. And the results were staggering. This has become an incredible whiskey. Um, those of you that have had an opportunity to try it oxidized know exactly what I'm talking about. And there's a few of you, um, but I, I love this stuff. I think it's amazing stuff. Like I said, I bought two. I'm going to talk about that in just a sec. I just want to get to the chat over here because I see some red popping up. Got Jeremy Sipper Social Club in the house. What's going on, brother? We're going to be going live on his channel very soon. I believe it's February 12th, which is a Tuesday. Either I'm going to his house or we're going to be doing a Google Hangouts. It's a little harder for uh, me these days to get out during the week, especially because the weeks are either loaded with me teaching kickboxing or watching the kids while I, my wife goes to teach her fitness class. It's just, it's pretty much a disaster all the time. So anyway, Jeremy and I are going on February 12th, I believe at eight o'clock. So stay tuned for that one. Um, Whiskey Whistles, like I said, Whiskey Whistles in the house and he's saying he's tried the Virgin Oak and the 12 year old um, early June, 2016. I should probably read that a little bit better, but just scanning here. Uh, Malted in Montreal. What's up, buddy? Can't stay. Came by to say hello and goodbye. Santa Cruzin, what's going on, brother? That's what I'm pouring tonight. Good. I'm glad you have a bottle of it as well. Very, very nice stuff. A couple people, uh, as I was messaging, sending the word out that we were going to be going live, or I was going to be going live anyway, a um, couple uh, people were saying that they don't get Deanston quite often in their area. 
I just want to give a quick thank you to a couple of people, actually. Uh, Aquavite, Roy, of course, like I said earlier, he went live and it was absolutely epic. He broke the internet. There was like 300 people in the, in the video. And then when he signed off, and that's when I noticed that he went live, uh, there was like 1.8 uh, thousand, or sorry, yeah, 1.8. 8, so 1,800 um, people had already viewed it. So that's insane for a couple hours, only be, like only being aired for a couple hours, that thing went off. So it was obviously an epic live that I have to catch later on. Thank you very much for the virtual dram, brother. I really appreciate it. He's saying, have a great stream, buddy. This is awesome. Uh, this is an awesome community. Love you. I love you all. So thank you, Roy. And then Thomas, thank you very much, buddy. He dropped five dollars. Thank you very, very much. Appreciate the virtual dram. Um, cheers to both of you guys. Jason Whiskey Wise is in the house. What's going on, brother? Also, Jason just had an opportunity to review um, some incredible Gordon McPhail whiskeys that I I saw and I was absolutely blown away. And I would love to try them myself. Uh, I those are definitely far too rich for my blood. There's no moving around things in order to be able to get those bottles for me i don't think um but wow go check those out if you haven't already peter white's in the house what's up who else do we have and dh selves what's going on brother okay so this one is all fruit on the nose like it it's only nine years old but it's got this baked dessert like fruitcake and then all kinds of like fresh fruit and cooked down fruit the you can tell this is gonna be a high viscosity like you can tell that it's gonna be very syrupy on the on the palate <laughs> whiskey throttles in the house He's already complaining about Jeremy. He loves to <laughs> throw jabs at Jeremy every once in a while. So, <laughs> Jeremy's telling him to watch himself. <laughs> Sipper Social Club, um, in his Whiskey of the Year video, he said that this whiskey was the biggest surprise. And he called it um, a huge sherry bomb. <laughs> and the moment he published it, and I saw that, I started laughing because I've I put my foot in my mouth about a billion times on this channel so far, and I only have 357 episodes. So do the math. That's a lot of times per episode. Uh, but he called the Deanston Bordeaux cask a sherry bomb, and it's actually a Bordeaux bomb, I guess you can call it. It's a wine bomb, maybe. Pretty funny. <laughs> uh jason whiskey wise is saying rob i gotta be up early but we'll catch you live on the flip Solange, cheers brother thank you for tuning in uh varix varox or varix is saying good morning what's up buddy dj one one what's good love the got whiskey wall in the background yeah so i have the rest of the collection of game of thrones stuff coming actually very shortly so i'm pretty excited about that okay enough talking on the pilot <laughs> raspberries <clears throat> It's so syrupy. It's super viscous. Honestly, some people find this hot, but I don't find it hot at all anymore. It was when I opened the bottle. It's completely changed. It's got an incredible syrupy note, almost like a PX sweetness to it, which is crazy. I'm, I've never tasted that in a Bordeaux cask before. I've tasted sweet whiskeys, but never like the Bordeaux ones that I've tried don't end up being this sweet. So it was definitely, in my opinion, probably a first fill cask. I think the age of the whiskey helps with the sweetness. There's like a nice malty note in the background.
Okay, so probably one of the most unhealthy cereals you can ever buy and eat is Fruit Loops. And honestly, this tastes like Fruit Loops. That's the first type, that's the thing that comes to mind when I when I sip this, Fruit Loops. <clears throat> Um, <laughs> messages are being deleted by Blue Wing C. Um, <laughs> what else is new? Super Social Club earning his money tonight. Uh, Santa Cruz in was saying something about that. Oh, Jeremy is on point. Good. Moose76 is in the house. What's up, buddy? Saying that somebody's crushing. George Kaplan's here. How's it going, brother? <clears throat> so what are you guys drinking tonight 35 of you in the chat i will be giving away a sample tonight um i promised it to the people that watched my jack daniels heritage video if you watched right to the end you knew uh that i was going to give away a sample of what's dwindling rapidly um, so you're going to get two ounces of this, and then I'm going to save a little bit of this whiskey for when Jeremy and I do a head-to-head -head with this, the the Barrel Proof, and the Select. The other two bottles are compliments of Peter White. He's going to let me borrow his bottle so that we can do the side-by-side. Uh, -side. Kevin Mayato's in the house. What's going on, brother? Uh, Varix is drinking milk. Very good choice. He's saying no disrespect to Fruit Loops. I, I actually think Fruit Loops is fantastic. I'm just saying that this tastes like Fruit Loops, which is a great thing. Aaron Smith, what's going on, man? He's saying, I'm back, Rob. I've missed you. <laughs> I've missed you too, buddy. Vegas Art, Springbank 10 here. Very nice. Octomore 8.1 for Kevin. Independent 28-year-old Highland Park for DH Sills. That sounds incredible. The mashing drums in the house. What's going on, Jason? Thanks for joining, buddy. So near the end of my stream, I will be giving away a sample of the Jack Daniels heritage um i have a few samples here either people that i plan to meet up with people that i'm sending a shirt and i'll probably send it all at once or people that haven't given me their address and or if they gave it to me i missed it or something so um if you haven't got your sample from me yet please contact me and i will be sure to send it your way uh, that was from the island park this Highland Park here um, giveaway. And then Sipper Social Club comes in with a virtual dram and he says, got to run soccer playoff game. Cheers. Cheers, buddy. Good luck tonight. <laughs> Looks like I have Jeremy Scarecrow bag HP. Actually, the, the one that he has was given to him by me, actually. But, um, yeah, this is the LCBO exclusive that I was part of choosing. And I think it's excellent whiskey. It's 12 years old. That's what the bottle looks like. It's called Trillium because the Trillium is the Ontario flower and LCBO is only in Ontario. So that's why they named it that. And I think it's very good stuff. There's only... I think 600 and something bottles of that, 61.4%. DH Sills is saying, Welp about the about to try the 1972 full proof party uh, source single barrel. Wow. I'm sure that's going to be amazing, uh, incredible. Sean, what's going on, buddy? Nice to see you in the chat. He's drinking Red Breast 12 Cash Strength. Um, I would 
love to have another bottle of the red breast 12 cast strength i think that's fantastic stuff it's one of my favorite irish whiskeys if not my favorite um close second or first i'm not sure i gotta do a side by side or something but the tyrconnell 16 year old which is another great deal at the lcbo actually but again for those of you just joining i'm gonna give this a mark very shortly it's Cast strength at 58.7%. It's a nine-year-old Deanston that's matured in Bordeaux casks. And it's only 98 or $99 at the LCBO, which is a fantastic price. So as you've noticed, I haven't added a drop of water because I actually like this one better neat. It still, obviously it's gonna have a touch of heat uh, neat, but it's got this incredible oak flavor and it's got all these beautiful fruits and the viscosity, like I don't want that viscosity to go, go away. And if I added water, it would, I've tried it before. Um, in the beginning I had to add water cause it was super hot, but it's mellowed out so much. So that goes to the oxidizing of bottles when you keep it open for a few months the the whiskey changes and i know horse looning uh posted a video about how he doesn't believe that happens at all and he'll open a bottle pour it and review it and i just think he's wrong uh, personally i think he's wrong um i don't know he gave the example about how uh whiskey ages in barrels for years and it doesn't oxidize and that's fine and that that's a great point but what he fails to recognize is the fact that it's constantly interacting with wood while it's in the barrel and the wood is constantly expanding and contracting which makes the whiskey move around which changes the chemical um you know makeup of that whiskey over time then once it's put into a bottle the only thing that can change this whiskey is air and you can sense it right away when you had a bottle open for a while and this one really, really benefits from being open for a while. So if I, if you buy this, I recommend that you pour out like two or three drams into a decanter or um, an ox, like one of those wine decanter that you pour it in and it actually oxidizes your, your whiskey right away. Pour it into one of those, drink those drams decanted and then let it sit for like a month or two because it's made a world of difference and it's become an A plus whiskey for me after being open for a while earlier. I'd probably only give that like an 82, 83. It's drastically changed. I want to give a quick uh, thank you to Mo's Chun uh, who just dropped a virtual dram. Thank you so much, brother. I really appreciate it. Uh, just dropping in to say hi. Thank you for dropping in, buddy. I really appreciate it. Uh, Gregor's in the house. What's going on, man? Nice to see you. Lewis, what's going on? How are you? Whiskey Throttle's in the house. Whiskey Throttle is the man. And the reason why he's the man today is because he helped me complete the set of Game of Thrones whiskeys. Um, so I'm super psyched about that. And those whiskeys will be reviewed very shortly, all in one shot, probably this Monday coming out. If I can, uh, this Monday coming up, sorry, if I can get all the whiskeys in time. So we'll see. <clears throat> Mash and Drum is saying, is that Deanston a distillery exclusive or is it rele only released certain times of the year? Honestly, I think it's just a one-off, to be honest with you. It's not a distillery exclusive. It was available at the LCBO. I believe it was available in parts of the U.S. as well and Europe. Um, so I'm going to say no, it's not a distillery exclusive. And I don't think they're ever going to make this again because I think um, – the, the next time something like this comes out, if they still have Bordeaux Reserve, it's going to be a completely different whiskey, perhaps an older whiskey or something like that. But they did an incredible job with this one. I'm going to give you guys another look at the label so that if you want to go find it, that's what it looks like. All right. um scotch for dummies just jumped in and they're saying deanston my fave uh at 10 o'clock the scotch for dummies go live so i'm usually 
off probably about a half hour before that sometimes a little earlier sometimes we push it right till 10 o'clock depending on how many drinks uh jeremy and i get into but tonight we'll definitely be signing out at around 9 30 so you guys will have about a half hour to take a break grab a drink of water and then go back to the scotch for dummies and have another dram drew what's going on buddy so that's drew from the scotch for dummies <clears throat> Peter White is saying there's 3,240 bottles of this 2008. So, wow, that's a lot more limited than I thought. A lot more limited than I thought. Gotta love Peter White, always bringing in the facts for me. I gotta hire him actually. I think my life would be a lot easier if I had him doing my research. Nicholas, what's going on buddy? He's saying reports are done, time for a black art 5.1. Very nice. Let me know what you think. I believe that the 6.1 is better. I believe that the 4.1 is better than the 5.1. And I think the 6.1 might be better than the other two. So let me know what you think. <clears throat> Whiskey based did the research for Peter. And uh, Drew is saying that he believes the Deanston Virgin Oak is one of the best value tasting scotch out there i think a lot of people agree with that yeah like the finish on this is incredible it's super sweet like bourbon lovers are gonna love this once they get past that threshold they're gonna love this and like Jeremy would say, this is a sherry bomb. It's not actually a sherry bomb, but it's what sherry bomb, sherry lovers are looking for in a sherry whiskey. That's exactly that. Rob Horvitz is asking, uh, still think the full volume is better than the HP 18 as a buy Highland Park. Um, 100% man. I would buy the full volume over the 18 year old any day if they were the same price and i had them side by side i would buy the full volume over the 18 year old a lot of people are going to say that's crazy but i love that full volume i love the abv on that full volume um it's just a great whiskey in my opinion and it's well priced it's 130 bucks at the lcbo which in my opinion is a steal <clears throat> Uh, Lewis is asking, is Octomore 9.3 worth a pickup at 200 US dollars? Seems kind of high here. Yeah, uh, that's expensive. That's on the higher end for the 9.3. Uh, very good whiskey, but I have it right here. But for 200 US dollars, you can get a lot of really good whiskey. So I'm going to say if you could try it first to make sure you like that sort of thing, try it first. But it's very good. I probably would pay if I, if it was my only chance at the bottle. I probably would pay two hundred American. Um, thank you very much, Scott. Really appreciate it. He's giving sending me a virtual dram. Guys, like I said earlier, if you haven't already, number one, subscribe to the Scotch for Dummies. I'm pretty sure all of you have if you're in this chat. But also tune into their show at ten o'clock because they put on an awesome show. Uh, really cool guys. Some of my good buddies. So check them out. Whiskey Throttle saying, are you using the phone or computer camera? I'm using my HD uh, Logitech computer camera. The only reason it looks a little bit better is because uh, my friend Brian donated pretty good lights to the channel. Uh, since I moved house, um, my, my basement had an incredible lighting system at my old house. Now I'm in a spare bedroom, so I need like external lights to make the set look better. The set looks a lot like my old set now. Uh, thanks to Drew's advice, actually, from the Scotch for Dummies, I tried to design my set as similar as possible to the old set. But the lighting is thanks to my buddy Brian because he donated that to the channel. So, <clears throat> um, Blue Wing C is asking about Sprite uh, Cranberry, and, and Peter White was saying that he deleted the 
comment because he hates cranberry. <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. <laughs> Blueing C. <laughs> Keep sipping that milk, buddy. I might have to time those guys out in a, in a second. I feel like I I suspect those might be uh, my student my students from. Put user on a timeout. There we go. And then I also time out another guy. There we go. I think those guys are my students, to be honest with you. Go do your homework. All right. Uh, Daniel wants me to send him a link, and he's going to open up an SMWS. So I think that's a fair trade. I'm going to let him into this chat. We've got about a half hour left. He's under the weather, so... All right, sent my friend. There you go. <clears throat> Stuart McDonald, what's going on, buddy? LCBO Bourbon Lottery is now open. He is correct. Jamie Campbell is saying thanks for the Stark whiskey the other day. Jamie, it was a pleasure, guys. Um, Actually, I'm glad Jamie jumped in because it just reminded me. If you haven't already, if you're a dad, I mean, any male that's watching this would be interested in what Jamie and Nick have to say. But check out Dads in the Six. Um, they have a podcast, so you got to get it on either Apple. I think Spotify has it as well. Um, they're on Instagram, so go at Dads in the Six and you'll find them. But they talk about some really cool topics. They invited me onto their podcast. We recorded it on Tuesday and it'll be broadcasted this upcoming Tuesday. So check it out. It was a lot of fun. I had a blast with them. He's saying thank you for the start because I brought over uh, one of my bottles of Dawini, um, the Stark, the winter uh, frost or whatever it's called. So that was a lot of fun. Gregor, take care, buddy. He's saying, sorry, guys, I got to go now. Uh, working early. Cheers. Take care, buddy. <clears throat> the wrench is working hard. What did I miss? I missed another thing. <laughs> Blue wings down. <laughs> um, DDIY, what's going on, buddy? My buddy, Eugene, how are you? Jock's in the house. What's up, brother? Nice shirt, Daniel. Can you see me? <laughs> the hat's the a little hat. tight, but the shirt fits okay. <laughs> the hat's tight? <laughs> Just because of the hair I got underneath it now. Eh? <laughs> or I got to throw some forward like you do so I look cool. Is that, does that look cool? I don't even, I don't know. I don't know, from like back in the little rascal days when you were too young to watch TV. They, they came out with the little rascals when I was probably about like 11 or 12. It was a movie though. Yeah, it's not as good as the old black and white TV show. No, definitely not. Go Habs is saying, I have a podcast. It's called Crappy Hockey Teams in the Six. Go Habs is such a hater, and he's probably even more angry now that the Leafs got a very good defenseman recently. So, Go Habs, brace yourself for a year that you're gonna hate, my friend, or a finish to the season that you're gonna hate. Uh, there's too much, uh, too much hate. We don't need any of that hate. So, <laughs> you're drinking Deanston. Yeah. Solid stuff here. Have you tried this one? No. I don't even know if I can get it here. Well, you do have a friend in Toronto. so. All right. Uh, I might be able to get it here. I never looked for it. It's whatever. I, I mean, it, it, it's a okay. sherry bomb, right? Jeremy said it's a sherry bomb. I probably won't want it. <laughs> it's yeah, actually it's not a sherry bomb. bomb. <laughs> it's actually a, just a uh, – it's Asian Bordeaux cask. So. Oh, is it? Yeah. Yes, I know I don't sound that good, Peter. That's why we're gonna pour this dram first. Actually, I know I know where I can find two of these bad boys right now. 
There and actually, go. my buddy Jeremy, uh, another another buddy Jeremy, he came by today. Uh, met him for the first time. He's from Windsor. Uh, we tried this together. I gave him a bunch of samples as he left, but um, he was wondering where to find this. And he's staying at a hotel nearby, so maybe he can come by and uh, at the LCBO between where he's staying and I live. There's two of these available. Uh, Swami, I think, was teasing you a little bit there. He, Swami uh, doesn't do it right, though. He that's, dropped, that's like one cent too much, dude. <laughs> he dropped a $1 super chat. Thank you very much, Swami. Really appreciate it, buddy. Uh, Richie Z's in the house. What's going on, brother? This is not. It's a buck for me. I, well, I doubt I'll ever get that money. <laughs> I doubt I'll ever get it. Anyway, so a buck for Daniel. <laughs> a buck for me. I, th I got two different things I can open up and try. <laughs> so that one, so Varix is verifying that that is my student. He's saying I'm going to go finish my speech now because he's angry that I timed him out for 300 seconds. Um, <coughs> yeah, well, it's bad that you're, you're watching your teacher. teacher. Yeah, you're too young to be watching my channel. Yeah, put an age restriction on this channel. Yeah, I did, right? Maybe I'll I'll hide him from the channel. How how do they know how old somebody is? It doesn't matter. You can't do it anyway. It doesn't matter because they, they they can adjust their age. So yeah, you know, they, they're good kids actually. If it's the kid I'm thinking of, he's a really good kid. He's just messing around. You, go. you got to say that anyway. <laughs> so we'll open up this. Yeah, what's that one all about? Um, winter Comforts, 76.65, or 72.65, hmm. which if I remember right is, uh, somebody will correct it on the line here, but it's probably Milton Duff. 76? 72.65. 10-year-old, 59.8%. Um, and I believe this came from a certain company's whiskey calendar that they couldn't sell everything in. Oh, wow. Yeah. So somebody has picked up a bunch of their bottles to to sell them individually. Very nice. 72 is Milton Duff. You're correct. Yes. And here's a brand new one. This is the first. This is a sample of the first cask. One three three. Wow, nice. Uh, did did Keg and Cork get the exclusive yet? The one that they're getting only? No, the one that we picked while I was in Scotland. It's not arrived yet. If it has, they bet didn't tell me. That's like extra cool because it's them that get to pick a, a single cask, and then you guys went to them and picked a cask from them. It's a lot of, I don't know. It's like a single cask from a single cask. Yeah, well, we were there. We picked the entire. We got to try from five barrels. We actually tried from six barrels, but one of them wasn't. We weren't allowed to pick, and that was like a um, tea, a tea dropper, teaspoon dram. They call it. Yeah. So it was like all Macallan and a drop of Highland Park in it, or something like that, right? Oh wow, interesting. So this one three three point one. Is virgin oak barrel? It's only five years old. Which one should I open? Well, it's up to you, man. Do you, you uh, which one do you want to try more? Well, I've tried Milton Duff. I know I've never tried this one. Give it a shot. All right. Maybe I gotta get myself. that. I gotta get the SMWS Bushmill. I gotta get a bottle of that because the sample that Peter White lent me was incredible. Actually, I think you would appreciate this. Um, I'll wait till you start talking to go grab it. Go ahead. What do you want me to say? It's a bush mill. It was probably not cheap in the first place. Richie Z's a moderator. Like, what do I got to do to get become a moderator for crying out loud? Everyone, Santa, Richie. I'll let, you, I'll let you be a moderator. I'll let you be one. Say something. I want like that. to. I can, I can put you up there. Go block. Somebody, I want to block somebody. 
<laughs> you just want to block um, Swami. <coughs> uh, this is, you know what? The cold is messing me right up, man. <coughs> so, Sorry, guys. Sorry about that. So Peter White gave me this, and this is an exclusive from it's. I think it's two hundred mil. Yeah, two hundred milliliters. It's aged for. 48 months in new uh new oak new ontario oak uh it's unchill filtered no added color 70 percent malted barley sorry 10 percent malted uh rye and 90 percent unmalted rye so 48 months cash yeah. strength whiskey that's from uh, Dylan's. This is an Ontario uh, whiskey company. They're getting, they're putting out some awesome things, and they're just getting better and better. So, hopefully, eventually, I'll be able to do a, a review. Yeah, that would be cool. Go to the distillery and do it right there. Yeah, that'd be cool. I'm, I'm gonna review this soon, and then um, this was donated, like I said, by Peter White to the channel. Uh, so thank you, Peter. Um, but, yeah. they're exclusive. Like, there's only a, a few hundred of those, and they sold out like. Five minutes. Okay, I gotta take a sip of this. Maybe it'll sub subdue the coughing. I wanna. <coughs> I can't. Uh, I can't inhale without having to freaking have a freaking hack and fit here, Mister Irish Dilly Dilly. Who's that? Mm. I don't mm. know, Mister Irish. What's going on, man? And we also got Killer Jolt in the house. What's going on? Here's That's the interesting cool. thing about this one, guys, is I was just at a local distillery here in Alberta, and I saw their barrels sitting in that distillery being ready to be reused. So this is kind of cool. Too bad my, my palate and my nose are shot right now. All I get is alcohol. Yeah, honestly, when you're sick, it's not even worth having a, a, a dram because... It felt good, though, it. here. Whew. Burn yeah. a hole right through this six. Vodka will, do, <laughs> vodka will do the exact same thing, though. You might as well just be drinking vodka. No. Actually, I have some vodka that somebody shipped me from Ontario. I don't know why we haven't got it out here yet. Um, Black Cow. It's not made in Ontario. It's made in England. You told me about that one. Black Cow. So, um, uh, the Silva, too, just broke his computer or his uh, phone screen which is what I did next door neighbor had their dog, a brand new puppy dog, you know, and I, I bent over to pet the dog and I have a side pocket of my coat. I don't even know how it fell out, fell out, landed in the snow. That's why I grabbed it really quick and just touched the side of the concrete enough to crack the screen. First time ever in my entire life on a cell phone. I wow. cannot believe it. That's that, why we drink whiskey. Yeah, that's brutal. I hate when that happens. I mean, that's never happened to me yet, but that's bound to happen to me eventually. I drop my phone all the time. So you have, you are now being implicated here in the comments as uh, somebody's reason why they collect whiskey. Yeah, I'm seeing that. Jonathan McGu McGuire is saying, started collecting about a month ago. Whiskey in the Six is my go to for insight into whiskey. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate that. Um, honestly, I, I try to buy two of everything. Like recently, there was a huge sale uh, in another province, and people were walking away with what what was supposed to be one per person. People were walking away with cases of Octomore six point three cases, and they're like literally the next day they popped them up and started selling them for three hundred bucks a pop. Yeah, which was more than double what they paid for those bottles. Sure it is, and it just when I saw that it left such a sour taste in my mouth because. I mean, buy two, maybe eventually you can sell one of them to like cut out the cost of what the first one you drank kind of thing. But like this, like the hoarding of like, like cases and cases of a rare whiskey, just, it hurts my heart. Like so many people are not going to get to try that whiskey unless they pay like obscene prices for it. I don't think a lot of people realize why I have so many bottles and it's not because I have cases of them. Yeah, but you have multiple bottles. It's not just like uh, a That's six right. of one bottle. You know what I mean? That's right. I want to be able to try it 
enjoy it. I, 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 if I have a second bottle and I really like the first one, well, then I'm keeping it, right? The other, you know, very few what I think of parting with, per se, <coughs> just because <laughs> I wanted to. Jock is saying, but I want to. I don't know if he's talking to, talking to what I just said, but <laughs> that was pretty funny. Sorry, finish what you were saying. No, I did. I just, I see lots of guys like that. Now, as an SMWS member, I mean, one of the guys, I don't see him anymore. I think the the wife got pregnant, and that's why you don't see him that much. But he would buy the entire outrun or outturn every every month. That's a lot. Yeah. Of A lot of money, let alone a lot of whiskey. That's six or seven bottles every month, right? But he wasn't buying, unless he was blowing off his feet, he wasn't buying, you know, doubles or triples. or. Yeah. Um, no, there are people out there that are, they're being greedy. They're ripping you off. Yeah, that's what it is. It, it like, it, get, it boils down to, like, I mean, maybe they need the money, man. Who am I to judge? I'm not judging. I'm just, it just hurts my heart a little bit to see. They don't need the money. They If they needed the money, they wouldn't be able to afford to buy two or three cases of any whiskey all at once. I don't know. That's I don't like to, I don't like to judge. I'm just I don't I don't Peter is a sales representative for Deerbrook Realty. Is that in your neck of the woods? And he wants to know if he missed the review of your Deanston. Did you give it a rating? Uh, I haven't actually set a mark yet, but I that's a, thanks for reminding me, Peter. Good point. Um you know what? I have to give this an A plus. like I said, it started really low for me because I wasn't happy with how hot it was and how um, the nose seemed pretty muted. But with time in the bottle, as it like opened up and oxidized, it's become an A plus for me. It's probably like a 90. I would even go as far as a 91. It's really, really good. Um, I'm about to try. I've tried it once before, but I'm going to give it another shot. It's a Highland Park 17 year old 59 point. 52.9%. It was chosen by Toronto Whiskey Society. The whiskey agency bottled it for them. Uh, Jeremy is part of Toronto Whiskey Society, and he gave me this sample. So I'm going to do a little bit of it right now, just because I love Highland Park. <coughs> this one's actually a lot heavier on the peat than most Highland Parks I've ever had. Does it normally get that cold in Ontario? It says it's colder than the Mac. Are you from the Mac, Kilojolt? For the it, Mac? It, honestly, it doesn't normally. I think they. it's been breaking records all week. It, this is the coldest I've ever experienced in my life. Look at, look at down on the States below you, Indiana, whatnot. They got good stuff. We are getting it now. Yeah. Uh, this weekend, we're going to go to minus 25. <clears throat> I don't know what that's going to be up north, but we always get that at least yeah. two or three times but, a year. I think right today was like minus 30 with the wind chill or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Which is crazy cold. Like it, the wind was so bad yesterday that when I walked to my car, the wind was blowing my face. I couldn't, like I barely could breathe. Well, then why do we live somewhere where the air hurts our face? I don't know. Because I mean, because we're not wimps. All well, right. I don't know. Not. Joe, Joe Rogan actually jokes about this quite often. He he says that Canadians are tougher than the average person. Um, <laughs> well, that's probably because he comes up here to go hunting. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's true. He does actually. He goes hunting yeah. in, the, in the mountains, I'm sure of it. My oh. good buddy Joe Mez just dropped a super uh, virtual dram. Thank you very much. Cobra really appreciate Jet. it, buddy. Cobra Jet Joe. Yeah, he, um, I think that's. Uh, is that his jabroni? Is that his jabroni name? <laughs> no. <laughs> I was just watching a movie where the guy called everybody a you bunch of jabronis. Oh, really? <laughs> what the was it? That's named after his uh, his vehicle, I assume. But, um, yeah, no, uh, Joe, Joe's a really cool guy. So thank you very much, Joe. Appreciate it, buddy. Right on. Minus 37, I think. Thought you were back in Alberta. <laughs> Killer Jolt is saying minus 49 will, a wind chill other day. Wind hurts your face is very accurate. My my students um, did a little test today. They opened the window, and they got a glass of water, and they 
threw it outside the wall, like through the window, and it froze. Yeah, crystallized. At, in the air, in the air, it froze. It was insane. Uh, Mose says it'll be plus fifty-five where he is. You know what, Mose? Mose again? I think Australia. Moose. It's not Mose. It's Moose. Moose oh, seventy-six. Moose, Moose seventy-six. Sorry. I think. There's Mose shotting, but he. I think oh, he is that is that Fahrenheit though? Because I think actually I think Moose seventy-six might be in Texas. Ah, wrong though. Fahrenheit doesn't but count. How how many um, is there Moose in Texas? Maybe that's not. Maybe he's not. I don't know. No. Man, this stuff would probably be really good. I can't smell a thing. This cold is killing me, man. <laughs> <clears throat> this side of the park is super peaty. I really like it. It's apparently there's refill sherry casks in here, but I really like what they did with the uh, full volume, which is just bourbon casks. Have you heard of Elements of Eiley? Um, it sounds familiar. Yeah, it's the it's the same company that brings us. And I'm gonna say this wrong, probably Askeg, Askeg, Port Askeg. Yeah, that that's where Kalila is from. Right, but this is an independent bottler, and they do have Kalila and different different ones blended together. But they have another one here. This is you want to talk about Pete Eiley blended malt scotch. Yeah, they're little bottles. They're a little more money. But yeah, they, I, I have seen, I've seen the Roy with those actually. Yeah, they do a neat little thing, elements of Eiley. They'll do other ones, just elements of yeah. scotch or whatever. And they'll have like the symbol for whatever element. So Bormore would be like BW2. There's a series of them. If you guys haven't seen them, take a look. They're put out by a company called Specialty Drinks. But you can look this up on uh, www.eiley.com. Very cool. It is a neat. It is a neat blend. Honestly, if I ever was offered a job by Highland Park, Highland Park mainly McAllen, McAllen as well, but I think more Highland Park, I would take it. Um, I love this stuff. Like I love Highland Park. I love their character. Like the the, the peat that they put into their whiskey, especially when like this one's a little heavily, um, a little bit more peated than usual, and it's fantastic. Toronto Whiskey Society did a. Very good job in picking this one because this one is awesome. 17 years old. I think I'm going to have to buy Jeremy's bottle from him because, I don't know, I'm a big fanboy of Highland Park. Santa Cruz is saying, just tried my Deanston and you're right. On the oxidization, uh, it helps amazingly. Yeah, no, it does. The oxidization definitely helps. <laughs> Go Habs is saying the Italian Viking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, holy crap. You, you, like, you know what? You, I, what I, was that movie? Apparently, Orkney is beautiful, though. Oh, it is. It's absolutely. I'd be there in a heartbeat. <laughs> when you're done going to Orkney, why don't you fly over to Faroe Islands where the Vikings really lived? <laughs> Maybe I will. And you can meet Rooney. Remember Rooney that came on my show when we were doing World Whiskey Day a year ago or so? Mm-hmm. That's a Viking right there. And it's a beautiful place to live, man. That's where they should film the Game of Thrones. Probably be some real dinosaurs or, or dragons there. I wonder where um, Santa Cruz got his bottle because Richie Z is saying that he can't find it in Cali. And Mash and Drum was saying he couldn't find it. A few of the U.S. guys were saying they can't find it. So maybe he purchased it online from... from uh, the UK or something. Which one are you talking about there? Oh, he's saying it was at Total Wine. Very interesting. Oh, That's well. the this Deanston Bordeaux. This one right here. Look at the color on that bad boy. That's natural color, by the way. I think we had some. Did you? I think we had some here. I just never picked them up. Yeah, um, you can't buy them all. Like it, it, this is this is something that I've learned, and I gotta really keep reminding myself is that you can't have them all. You gotta let some go. It's gonna be too. Dude, you're never gonna get them all. No. Here's an example. Are you ever gonna try this? Probably not. No. Well, I wouldn't bet on it, but <laughs> this this was poured by me into the bottle at Caden Heads okay, in Campbelltown. Cool. Well, maybe I'll try it in a package that should be arriving 
any minute now. Well, maybe. Look how how much is out of that bottle. There you go. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. You don't know what it is, though. What is it? It's actually not a whiskey. Oh, really? What because they're legally not allowed to call it a whiskey. Double mm -hmm. distilled BPS. Um, I forget what he said it was. Base Spirit something. Glen Guile Distillery. Oh, cool. 56.3%. So like, um, underaged, I guess? Probably. Cool. But I picked it because it was the one I liked the most when I tried. It's a living out of a living cast, they call it. Right? Interesting. How do we feel about the whiskey exchange? Jonathan McGuire. What part of the whiskey exchange are you referring to? So whiskey exchange is a website uh, from the UK. I've I've purchased from there a couple times when my brother in law was living in the UK for a year. Um, and he picked it up and brought it back? Yeah. Yeah, I sent it to his house, and then he would bring them bring them back periodically. What I like about the U, uh, the whiskey exchange and um, Masters of Malt in the UK is you can buy the bottle and you can buy a sample with that bottle if you want of that bottle, or you can just buy a bunch of the samples, try it first, then buy a bunch of the bottles as well. Um, so I think more stores need to be operating that way. I think selling the sample is a great idea and it gives the person an opportunity to, you know, pay a little bit of that bottle, try it first, and then see if they want to invest. Yeah. J444 said shipping is very expensive. So I got a bottle of Talisker 18. Yeah, I got one of those too, actually. And if you get it, uh, yours probably came out of the U.S., right? Absolutely, yeah. That's yeah, this yeah. one right here. But it looks exactly like that one. It's the same one you got, yeah. Yeah. But it's, uh, this came from straight straight through from the whiskey barrel. Okay. But you got to double the price. Yeah. Uh, I paid 115 American for that. Yeah, 115 American. I paid 180 Canadian. Yeah, so a bit more than what I paid. So when it got here, uh, I think he probably the guy that ordered it probably owed me nine bucks, right? Right on. It was probably a little less than that, but you just have to let customs know directly, right? I haven't we, done it yet myself, but I might. We don't have that option in Ontario. They they pretend like they know the rules and they don't allow it to happen. So Well, then that's because you pussies out there don't stand up and fight with them. Yeah. They know. You're you're a you're a civil servant and I'm the civilian. You're gonna do what I ask and, and so forth. Remind them. I'm a government worker, so I can't really be. So what? You're a civil servant. Do you take an oath? No. No? When a cop becomes a policeman, doesn't he take an oath? Probably, yeah. Yeah, he takes an oath to be a civil servant. Yeah. And you're the civilian. He's the servant. <laughs> Remember that. Remind them of that. <laughs> I did. Yeah. The cop was giving me tickets. We may or may not have a few police officers in the uh, chat. My sister lies as well, actually. But I don't have anything against that. I mean, I, I respect the uniform. I don't have to respect the people that get the wrong idea of their authority. I agree with that. I agree with that. Right? He boss is saying hello from Silent Bob. That's Paulo, uh, your buddy. <laughs> Silent Bob. How you doing, buddy? Yeah. I like the silent ones. <laughs> lets me get more words in. Yeah. <laughs> Did I see Louis? Oh, Louis in there. I didn't see him come in. Yeah, he's been in for a while. Probably. I can't see everything. And these new bifocals aren't helping this old man. <laughs> Driving me nuts, to tell you the I truth. I got to get another hat made. I only have this gray one left. I got to get another black one made. Yeah. Make sure when they say extra large, large, they are for real. <laughs> this This one is medium large, I think. That's what this one is, too. That's why you don't have it pulled on full ways. Yeah. <laughs> tight for your noggin, too. So this yeah. whiskey would be really good. This is a Stillwaters, <clears throat> except I have a cold. Stillwaters, eh? Which yep. one is that? 133.1 1 from the SMWS. So it's from the States. It's the first barrel. Stillwaters from Ontario? No. This is Stillwaters in Ontario. That's why Maybe I'm, I'm wrong. 
Stock and Barrel is technically the distillery is actually called Stillwaters. Yeah, yeah, I know. I have I have their bottles down here. No, no, no. This is. Um, here, let's look it up. The place I used to go, I have to update my codes. It's 133. Is It's a brand new number. Yeah. And this is the very first cask. Killer Jolt is saying that uh, Black Hat and Royal Blue 6. I used to have one like that. I've sold a few like that. Is he suggesting that he has one like that? I, maybe. I'm not too sure. I think it's because you are got blue behind you. Yeah. Or the number six has to be a royal blue. Yeah, he wants the royal blue. Uh, maybe he's saying black hat with a royal blue six, which I used to have, actually. I gave that one to my mom because she asked for it when she saw me wearing it. So. Oh, yeah, moms. moms are like that, eh? She, you know what? She gets whatever she asks for because she deserves it. Because you're a good Italian boy. You never argue with mama. That's it. Exactly. Unless she bribed you with tiramisu. Westland, thank you, Jason. And, and lasagna, man. 133 is Westland. I don't know why, because I'm looking at a Westland over there right now. Jason Coates just jumped in for that SMWS um, heroic claim there because he was quiet otherwise. I don't think – oh, no, he said something earlier. He, he knows what he's doing. Oh, he's he, the, knows, he definitely knows what he's doing, but he was quiet earlier, and then he, he said something to George, and now he jumped in on the SMWS chat. Oh, well, you know what? Some people might be jumping over. I think some other donkeys went live tonight, too, that don't usually go live. Oh, really? Yeah. Who, who's that? I'm not going to say names on your channel. <laughs> I already said what I said. Donkeys. <laughs> I don't, I and you guys go on their chat and tell them that guy over there said don't called you guys donkeys. And I go, ooh. ooh. Ah, I'll shut up because I'm going to end up sounding like Swami. <laughs> Um, I didn't get, I didn't get a, uh, an update. So. You know what? I have not been getting any updates. I don't know what it is. I got to go in my settings. Maybe, I don't know if it's something I changed in my phone or something I changed on the computer, but it's getting frustrating, man. I used to get, uh, um, notices all the time. I didn't even get one for you here. Yeah. That's, I, I think that happens to me a lot. Like for, that's why I sent it out through uh, Facebook and Twitter because, Although it didn't really make a difference because it's about the same average. We we get about 50 on average in the, on my chats usually. Steve A says he doesn't know anybody that's live yet. Good. Yeah, well, we got time still before the Scotch 4 dummies start. Yeah, half hour before the Scotch 4 dummies go on. Um, <laughs> you two blackball Daniel. Maybe. <laughs> it's possible. Blame him. Probably hey. because of my last uh, live with Swami. That's why. They're like, oh, no one associate. Triple Cap is saying donkeys doesn't really translate in the U.S., but it doesn't sound good. <laughs> it doesn't translate in the U.S.? Isn't uh, that what they call one of your uh, political parties down there? Isn't that what they are? Or is that, what is that? I always see the symbol of a donkey used with some political party in, in caricature cartoons, political cartoons. Apparently, Eric Wade is on tonight as well. Hmm, interesting. Oh, Eric yeah. Wade and the and the Whiskey Dick are going live tonight. Oh, okay. See? Somebody told me I they it just translates well. See? Man, this single barrel of Highland Park that the... <laughs> Poor Kevin. Toronto Whiskey Society picked is really good, man. That this, one, is, yeah. this is the job I want. This is what I want to do. I want to pick single casks, and I want people to enjoy them the way they should be. Unchill filtered, no added water, no added color, no added anything. Just filter out the, the big stuff, and let's get that bottled. Well, yeah, there is a company already in Canada doing that. Eh? No, I know. There's, there's probably a couple out in BC, I think. One is out in BC, and then there's probably going to be someone in Alberta that does it soon. At, at the end of the day, the more the merrier. It's all about <coughs> Gordon Ramsay. There you go. I love Gordon Ramsay. I don't know why. He is yeah. a bit of an ass, but I liked I like it when he game. put two pieces of bread on the side of some girl's head and asked her if she was a shit sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I love that guy. He, he's the best. And Master yeah. is usually pretty good. 
Yeah. It's a lot better than uh, Hell's Kitchen, that's for sure. Uh, J44-4? J44-4? Uh, no, I haven't, but the baller here has probably. No, I haven't tried that Highland Park, actually. No. I stick to the classics when it's Highland Park. I I will try any Highland Park I can get my hands on. I just I haven't tried that one. The only one that I've avoided up until now is the Magnus because it's only 40%. What is it? I'm I'm listening while testing old Jaguars in a simulator. Molten Oats. That's a job. Testing old Jaguars in a <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> Not me. I still got to go sit in front of the computer tonight and do some work. I kind of avoid it lately. It's going to empty wallet. Tax refunds. They get tax refunds down in California. Speaking of which, um, my tax refund for Sixer Kickboxing, or not refund, but taxes are due for Sixer Kickboxing and Whiskey in the Six. But what does zero profit translate to in taxes? <laughs> I don't know, but I I wouldn't get a, an Italian accountant if I were you. <laughs> okay. I got a good accountant. I haven't paid taxes in years. <laughs> That's smart. Teachers always pay taxes. We like, I get killed for taxes every year. Every single year. That's what the Fords need to get their uh, their drug money, man. I pay between <laughs> I pay between uh, like one thousand and two thousand bucks a year on, in taxes. Just me. Then my wife pays a little bit less than that. But Go Habs wants to know what a tax refund is. That's what I talk, that's what I say to all the guys in the in the lunchroom when I'm at work. Yeah, exactly. When they're talking about their ex-wives, I ask them what what's alimony. Yeah. They don't like that when I ask. Yeah, that one's tough. That one's a tough one. <laughs> you pay high taxes. Don't worry there, Santa Cruz, and I do too. Matter of fact, I make them take extra money off. Uh, P Boss is asking you which art bag is beside the grooves. That is a Galileo. I heard the Galileo was worth quite a bit of money. Was it? When? When you sold it on a secondary market? Because I don't sell on a secondary market. I've never had a Galileo. This is uh, from uh, Space 1999. You've never had a Galileo? No. Nope. I saw one at a bar, but I didn't taste it. Galileo, Galileo. That's what this is. Galileo. Galileo. I think how I'm much would you pay for it, Rob? How much would I pay for it? Yeah. Probably nothing, man. Honestly, like I'm not a big um, art bag guy, to be honest with you. The you more go. I try, the less I become an art bag guy. How much would you pay for the original Amrut Spectrum? Is that the 005? That one... Perfect. That one I'd be interested in for sure. Yeah, the first one. That one I'd definitely be interested in. But that's just because I'm going to open it and taste it and drink it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How about the first intermediate cherry? Those ones I can get still. The original one? Oh, I don't know. I didn't know there was an original one, to be honest with you. Yeah, you'll know by the old box. It's kind of crinkly. Oh, yeah, yeah, Cool. Whatever. I know Welsh Toro loves those Amrits, and so does um, Peter White. <laughs> Someone's saying crack it. I can't even enjoy it if I crack it right now, Richie. You have a High West 21-year-old, don't you? Uh-huh. I'm holding it right now. You know that. Is that it? Yeah. How much do you want to bet that's Alberta whiskey right there? Oh, I guarantee you that's Alberta whiskey. Yeah. Before somebody came out with 20... Five year old, what's that orphan barrel? Which is just Diageo from Gimbley. I'm going to finish off with a Kill Coleman PX because I recently purchased that at the LCBO because it's the only place I could find it and it's good stuff. So I'll be right back. Barton Rye, yep, yeah, be right back. Barton Rye, what's Barton Rye, Peter? And J444. Douglas Lang, old particulars. I'm fond of them. 
Um, I'm fond of Douglas Lang, period. I'm, I, I enjoy a lot of independent bottlers. Crack that Galileo, damn it. <laughs> Until I'm better. I got to stop moving my stuff around. I got to put the mundane, boring stuff up to the front. Eh? There. Now no one will see. I'll just put all the no-name stuff and why not. Honestly, it, even if you don't like peated whiskey, I think those of you that don't like peated whiskey need to try this at home in PX. Yes, you should. I don't agree with the prices, to be honest with you. I think they're pretty overpriced, but what's cool about them is they, they send single casks. Like, this is a single cask. <coughs> it's only six years old or about six years old, but um, it's cast strength, single cask, uh, PX finish. And it's got a crazy flavor profile to it. It was Barton. Oh, okay. Peter White, sorry, you're Kill Holman. Yeah. My West Old Rye was Barton, the 16 and the 20 year old. MGP was, was for the blended ryes with Barton. Okay. Peter White is the rye professional. Like he knows all there is to know about rye. He is absolutely obsessed with rye. Well, he's a smart man. I have a slight Alberta whiskey hangover. Master and Masterson's ten did the deed. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> which which Masterton Masterson's ten? Is there more than one? Here's a kill Holman's that that. There's a bunch of Masterson ten. Go ahead, show that again. I'm showing it right now. It's a cherry release. Um, probably the first sherry cask release, from what I was told by our Kilholman fan. I have another Kilholman here as well. I have the wine cask. This one dram dramatically improved as well with optimization. So, honestly, a lot of these single casks or cask strength, especially when they're a bit younger, they do very very well with a little bit of time uh neck poor he's new to the chat i haven't seen him before and he he was the one that was saying um oh neck poor that's a good name neck poor. Yeah. yeah it's probably some sneaky little guy coming in here watching you <laughs> why is he gotta be sneaky and little i don't know why you come up with a name like neck poor that's a that's pretty a good cool name. name i'm jealous i i like that name <laughs> it's a pretty cool name yeah Chad Adams is saying he's not had a kill Holman yet. They're good. I mean, I met the same guy that Swami interviewed, the owner, um, years ago at a whiskey festival uh, that they don't do anymore. It was actually when you call or look at McTaggart, that used to be a co-op uh, liquor store, and they put on a... Uh, I forget what they called their whiskey festival. It didn't last very long. It's very hard. The, the The reason that we have a whiskey festival here in Edmonton in January is because it's done the week before the Victoria whiskey festival. So everybody's coming in anyway. So they hit Edmonton, Calgary, and then go to Victoria. Yeah. And it works out well that way. Right. So. So, um, multi haggis muncher is saying nice little distillery kill a home and he's from Scotland. Um, I'm not sure what his actual name is, but seems like a really nice guy. I spoke with him through email. Um, you can just think, call him Mr. Muncher. <laughs> How about multi? Let's just go with multi. Um, why? What's wrong with muncher? A sample of this. You're sending a sample of that. I'm giving away a sample of this and you're allowed to type in the answer to if you watch the video. Um, whoever answers this question first and I will take a picture of the chat to give people proof that I'm not cheating here. Um, where's my phone? I gotta get it handy just in case. The question is, so get your keyboards ready guys in case you haven't already. Uh, the party source just joined us in time, obviously, because I'm going to be giving away a sample of what little I have left of this JD, which is a phenomenal whiskey, in my opinion. All right, here's the question. 
I recently reviewed this Jack Daniels single barrel heritage. What was the mark that I gave the Jack Daniels single barrel heritage? Do I have time to watch your video to find out? No, <laughs> probably not. Oh, uh, then we're screwed. All right. So appearing first on my channel is Louis. And I hope that picks it up. But that's it right there. There we go. Yep. You got the right answer. 93. So I gave it an A plus and I gave it a 93. Um, phenomenal stuff. A, a lot of people will watch that video in the chat, which is very cool. <laughs> Kevin, my auto is saying 50%. <laughs> um, a lot of people got that right, which is awesome. Thank you guys for watching. I gave it an A plus, but the correct answer is 93. So Lewis, please send your information to um, whiskey in the six at gmail.com and i will find a way to get you a sample cobra jet joe was very close with a 92 and he finished i was it was a 93 so you missed it by a point and you literally missed it by uh the next one down and then nicholas who's also a very good buddy from ontario uh said 93 but he was a couple late unfortunately so what he says what's that says he was first on his screen yeah, so I will. Um, it's, Don't worry about it, man. It is what it is. Like, I mean, I took the picture yeah. and I showed you guys. I'll show you guys again just so you guys know that I'm not messing around. But um, as you can see here, there we go. Uh, near the bottom there, Lewis was the first person to write. Right down. after uh, the party source said hello to me. Yep. Yeah. So. It's all the same. It just whatever. Right on. Congratulations, Louis. <laughs> DDIY says ninety three is incorrect. It's bonkers. <laughs> you know what's so oh. funny? Um, I I've said that about a few different types of whiskeys, and it's picking up so much that whenever, whenever people talk about whiskey with me, they use that word now. So <laughs> it's, it's becoming a thing now. That word bonkers. The you need to find a one and where it becomes the bottle of bonkers. I think I might have to put a sh like make a shirt or something, a hat, a shirt, whatever that says bonkers I, on it. Yeah, it's too late. I already made that shirt. <laughs> That's my word. That's my word. It comes from whiskey in the six. Not anymore, it ain't. <laughs> Just like somebody else that got upset about people using a, another word. I'm like, welcome to the world of social media. <laughs> Peter White saying bonkers versus wow. So like the bottle of wow, bottle of bonkers. Yeah. So what would that be? Would that be like, but you can still occasionally get a bottle of wow, right? Like the the JD is still available. There's quite a few available in the US. Um, yeah. If you have a friend out there, go ahead and grab it. Maybe Get I have a friend. Thing. Maybe I have a friend. I'll send him a bottle of, of uh, cash drank lot 40. Wink, wink. So multi haggis muncher. I'm gonna give him a shout out here because he actually refused the sample that he won fair and square, which was, I mean, his choice. But um, he didn't want me to have to pay to ship it out there, which was pretty cool of him. But um, he's saying, "Hi Rob, my name is Matthew. Just recently started an Instagram post at the underscore worm underscore tub." Quick trivia question for those of you still in the chat that are interested. Which distillery is known for using worm tubs? Well, more than one. They write it right on their bottle. Like, like it's a well-known thing for them. The best part is the first picture I see on there, which is this second so, last picture. Lewis, Lewis actually got it again. It's uh, Craig Alecky. <laughs> That's awesome. So, listen, Haggis Muncher. That was my first bottle from Duncan Taylor. Was one of their NC two range, but mine was a uh, Royal Bracula. Yours is an Imperial. 
and and um so there's a bunch that obviously use the the worm the worm tubs but right on the bottle of any cricket uh, that you buy they show the worm tubs they talk about the worm tubs so cricket yeah. is the one that i was thinking okay sure whatever buddy <laughs> um I what, was I, what was I watching or listening to where uh, there were some people either from the Netherlands or Sweden or whatever, every time they ended up at the distillery. Oh, it was uh, Gordon Stevenson that I interviewed on my live there. They, they would actually climb into the, the worm tub water. Oh wow! They'd strip down and jump in it. It was a thing they did. You turn your back and they. Yeah, he was telling that at the tasting. Which distillery is this? Remind me never to drink their whiskey again. Well, it's you got to remember that you don't drink that water. It's the water that's on the outside of the condenser. But... No, I know. I'm just kidding. Um, Santa Cruz is saying, "Don't go all aquavite on me," <laughs> with the with the trivia questions. I guess. Exactly. Edward Orr does it too. Yep. Have you ever done Edward Orr? I can't remember. I have not, and that's only because it's not available here. There's a few that I've been eyeing in another province, but it's just, it's, it just it keeps. I don't know. I, I keep passing over it. I don't know why. I really want to open this. A lot of people are buying this just to collect, but I'm, I'm debating whether or not I'm going to open it. I think I'm going to open it. Um, I only why have. It's only two years older than the other one. It's 22 years old. There was very few bottles made of it. Or, or, um, How much are they? There's 3,600 bottles. So this strictly limited run of 3,600 bottles has been the hallmark of classic Glen Farkless. Um, it's the 105 at 22 years old. It's the 50th birthday edition. I wonder if it'll taste as good as this one, though. Which one's that? You got to say something. You see, you see what what it is as a twenty year old. Yeah. In their in a nicer box, but do you see what was written on the box? Drink me, and it was Drink signed me by George S. Grant. You know, it'd be cool if you actually actually uh, you decide to drink that whiskey. <laughs> I might. He's asking you to. You can sell the box. It's signed. <laughs> I will. One day I'll be retired, and that's all I'm going to do. Don't. Just like Santa Cruzin. <laughs> Sit around Santa and enjoy Cru bottles. Santa Cruzin is living the life in Cali right now. Listen, he's got a 105, but it's an NAS. Here's here was a really lucky find for me. Was this bottle a 105? The 10 year old? No, well, it might be 10 years old, but see this tall, skinny bottle? Yeah, that's what they used to look like. That's an old school one. Is that yeah, yep. You, you guys in the Yukon territories, <laughs> you guys, <Pardon> <laughs> you guys are lucky. But um, it'll burn through that cold. That's what Neckpore is saying. Yeah. Honestly, I don't know if anything can burn through the cold right now. It's crazy cold. Um, Jason Colts is saying, do uh, Edward Dower. I, I will. I definitely want to get one or two. Uh, I've had my eye on a few, but they're not cheap, to be honest with you. No, because they're, they're really a small distillery, right? Hey, Travis, how you doing there? Travis, what's going on, brother? Nice to see you. Travis Faircloth, honestly, man, I love that guy. He's such a good dude. He is. He's such a good dude. Anybody that makes a living with caviar. Yeah. Yep. Uh, his, his company, um, I forget the name of it. I've advertised it on my channel before, but I definitely got to... Give him some shout outs. I better give some to that other guy on there, Blind Whiskey Reviews. Is he there? I didn't see him. He just came in. Oh, is that John? What's yep. going on, John? Nice to see you, buddy. 
John from Blind Whiskey Reviews. Very cool channel, guys. Check them out. Uh, so we got about 10 minutes until the Scotch Four Dummies go live. So I will be signing out and letting them take over. What do you What do you uh, got going on over there, Daniel? Uh, you made me look up some Edwardor stuff. I got I found that bottle straight from the cask. What's that one? Eleven year old what? Madeira. Madeira. I, they had a Marsala that's ten years old that I really wanted to buy. This is a sherry bomb for Jeremy. <laughs> it's a Madeira sherry bomb. A Madeira cherry bomb. I have an old Brooklady that's a Madeira. That's what I should open. Um, what's so, the one? Um, there's there's a guy that recently joined my um, independent bottler uh, support section in Patreon. I don't know if you've noticed that the last little while i think I, I mentioned it on my uh instagram and i mentioned it on my do i send you money on patreon you do you do actually damn it <laughs> you crazy bastard you where's all my money going <laughs> <laughs> it's going to these expensive bottles that i have surrounding <laughs> surrounding me um so his name's tamer super cool guy i wanted to give him another thank you honestly i'm pretty serious about this uh independent bottler it's gonna happen whether it happens by the end of this year or early next year, I really want to get it done. I really want to get into the LCBO. I really want people to be able to to find out what I chose. Um, I'm hoping that I can get into other provinces and hopefully the U.S. or global just because it's going to be super expensive at the LCBO and they're probably going to want majority of it if I'm going to sell it. So there's a few obstacles that I got to go through to get to where I need to be, but it, it's going to be cool. And I'll, it's going to come down to a little bit of funding as well, but I you think ever look, will, look, at, look at getting it bottled in uh, the U S no, you know what? Um, I have a company, good friends of mine, last straw distillery. If you guys haven't heard of them, check them out. Really cool guys. Um, I, they're going to be on my channel actually very soon. They've been on my channel before we're doing a whiskey we started it about a year and a bit ago. It's a year old now, so it's got to age for two more years before we can do anything with it or decide to do anything with it. Um, but they're also going to be bottling my uh, single cast selections too. So that's going to be pretty cool. That will be cool. Yep. Here, I'll let you take a look at this, the color of this. Oof, what's that one? 15 years old. It's 46% ABV. Is that the sherry? Um, I forget everything they say that's in here. It's an Edwardor. It's the fairy. Oh, wow. The fairy <laughs> flag. I'm sure that's delicious. I'm sure you, yeah. I forgot I had that here. You, you need to open that because that's not going to be worth much. Um, Travis Bearcock is saying, Opened up a bottle of 1992 Glendronic tonight. 26 years old. Good stuff. Oloroso. <coughs> Probably delicious. Oloroso is exactly where I like to be with Glendronic, to be honest with you. I love that. Yeah, that's uh, a good idea. And the Silva's hiding some 26-year-old Highland Park. Yeah. Um, Richie Z saying, wow, that's awesome news. Thanks, buddy. I really appreciate it. Uh, we'll see, man. It, it's still a work in progress, but hopefully by the end of the year, it's going to happen. And I really hope that everybody in this chat gets to try at least a sample. So uh, stick around, guys, because I think it's going to be a fun year. Um, so what are you doing more with independence? Because you made an announcement that you were going to focus on independence. Yeah. So I have a rundown coming up in the next month or so of all the Gordon McPhails that I have. Um, and then I have another rundown coming uh, with a bunch of the SMWS and I'll be doing periodically uh, like individual bottles as well as rundowns. The temptation to the dark side that you gave me or yeah, you gave me. Um, I, 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 I sold you way cheaper than I should have because I didn't look the price up. Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> well, sure. Let's go with that. Um, <laughs> there's about a third of the bottle left, which means that I really need to get to reviewing this whiskey soon because it's delicious. And I'm afraid that I'm going to finish well, it before I get a chance. 
I wonder if there's any. You can go on the SMWS website. There's, it's gone, man. That it's one's gone. gone. That one's gone. Um, but I definitely have to do that one. We have five minutes left. Daniel, why don't you tell these guys where they can find you? On Instagram, it's whiskey for my motorcycle slash whiskey throttle because somebody took the word whiskey throttle already. Uh, and uh, whiskey throttle, one word on on Facebook, no E. Thanks yeah. a lot for having me. My pleasure, man. And if you guys haven't already, please subscribe to this gentleman. He's a very cool guy. As you can see, he has a plentiful collection in the background. And with every new subscriber, he told me that he's going to be opening a new bottle. So <laughs> <laughs> um, I, can, I can make it look like I did. <laughs> Multi Haggis Munch is saying, are Caden Head whiskeys available in Canada? They are. And I actually really have to get into some Caden Head. I really have to get into some signatory. So there's going to be a bunch of independents that I'm going after this year. And it's not going to be just SMWS and it's not going to be just Gordon McPhail. It's going to be a bunch of them. Um, maybe even the whiskey agency if I can, because obviously they have some really, really good stuff. Uh, guys, thank you so much for joining tonight. Four minutes until the Scotch Four Dummies. We went a little longer than I anticipated, Daniel. Um, because I talk too much. That's okay. I talk too much too. That's why I became a teacher where they can't tell me to shut up. <laughs> well, they can, but then you send them to the principal's office. That, honestly, I don't remember the last time I sent the kid to the principal's office, but well, I, I'm lucky I have good kids. That's all. I used Daniel, to. Thank you very much. I really, really appreciate it. Daniel, thank you for coming on tonight. I really appreciate it. Thanks, guys. To all 50 of you in the chat, cheers and head over to the Scotch for Dummies because they will be uh, carrying on as of three minutes from now. Thanks, guys. Take care, everybody.